Now, in my previous video, I mentioned that I wanted to hold off on doing some more Diamond and Pearl remix speculation until we got some official news next month. But after reading some of your guys' comments, I figured we should talk about what will be one of the more defining features of this remake. Given that Diamond and Pearl remakes are probably going to be within this generation and will probably be out this year, we're going to be seeing Dynamax and Gigantamax. So how should that work in the Sinnoh region? Let's talk about it. Dynamax is a feature that came out in Sword and Shield. It is the gimmick of the 8th generation of Pokemon. You can also Gigantamax your Pokemon, which allow them to take on a Mega Evolution-like new state that eventually reverts back to their normal form. It's a projection. It's not really, as some of the developers have said, it's not exactly that the Pokemon genuinely grows into that size. It's energy grows into an outsized form and a projection of that energy gets put out into the world. That is what Dynamax energy is. It comes from the Galar region. It comes from the the, um, the wishing pieces. And it's all, it all very much fits into what Galar is. And it fits into the story of Galar very well. It's the fact that Eternatus came down from the sky, crashed. We know where the crater of Eternatus is. The wishing pieces are what Eternatus drops onto the Gala region as it flies around. There's a lot of lore there that is fit specifically to the Gala region, which brings up a lot of questions for people in the fact that when we've gotten remakes in the past, the gimmick of that generation from those original games generally gets carried into the remake. So, the assumption would be that Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing and Raid Dens in general are going to be coming to the Sinnoh region. Well, that prompts a lot of different questions. The first of which is that Raid Dens are only in the wild area in, uh, in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now, you can Dynamax and Gigantamax in gyms, and you can Dynamax and Gigantamax in certain locations in the Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor expansions that aren't necessarily Raid Dens, but it's in wild areas for the most part. So Sinnoh, unless they choose to add raid battle locations into routes and turn routes into multiplayer locations, just as the wild areas are multiplayer locations, they're going to need to add a wild area-like environment into the Sinnoh region. And there's a couple locations that I think you could do that in. As I mentioned in the previous video, which if you haven't checked out already, gives some of my immediate brief thoughts on the idea of Sinnoh remakes and why I think they're going to be coming this year. There's a card you can hit on the top right of the screen right now if you want to check that out. It'll also be in the end card of the video and it's, it's on my channel in the Pokemon discussions playlist. But for Dynamax, there's a couple locations, one of which is the northern regions of Sinnoh. Once you're heading up to Snowpoint City, that incredibly snow-filled, you got to trudge through to get to Snowpoint, is very slow, it's very open, there's a lot of different trainers to fight, there's a lot of area to cover where you can find hidden items, things of that nature. I think that would do really well being turned into a wild area because besides the music and the atmosphere of that region, it's a bit of an annoying trek and it's very open. In a lot of spaces, there's not a lot going on besides the various trainers that you can find in some of the wild grass patches. So I think that area would do really well to be turned into a Crown Tundra-esque wild area full of raid locations. I think you could even turn Snowpoint City into something of what Freezington looked like in the Crown Tundra, where the town itself was still set in the wild area. It was a totally open, with the camera totally free to move zone that we don't really see with any other Pokemon towns in the franchise. The wild areas on mainland Galar don't have towns in them. The wild area of the Isle of Armor has a couple buildings, but it doesn't have a town like Freezington. So if you wanted to turn that entire northern portion of Sinnoh into an area of a wild of a wild area, you could add Dynamaxing and raids into those locations. The other two that I've seen thrown about by the community is the Great Marsh. Uh, I mentioned in the pre in my previous video that you could also probably bring some non-native Pokemon to the Sinnoh region in through the Great Marsh and also turn that into a wild area. It would be a lot more varied in terms of its climate because it's not the northern part of Sinnoh, it's the Great Marsh. It's very swampy, a lot of grass type Pokemon, bug types, poison types. There's a lot you could do with it and obviously you'd be able to have raid dens there. The other one that I've seen in a couple fan maps is to the west of Canelave City. You could open that landmass up, 
uh, make Candelave City a little bit bigger and put a wild area in that location. Now, that's adding to the region, that's adding new locations that we really don't have in the original games. So I'm not necessarily confident that Game Freak would go that far. They, they really, in the past, haven't made such massive additions to their remakes. They've basically just built upon what's already been there, and the routes of Snowpoint and the Great Marsh are two areas where they could definitely do that. And when it comes to Dynamaxing itself, obviously, every Pokemon can Dynamax, and some Pokemon can get Gigantamax. When we saw the Oras remakes, we saw that they introduced new Mega Evolutions. We got Megas in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire that were not in X and Y when they first unveiled Mega Evolution. So, suffice it to say, we're probably going to see some new G-Max forms of Sinnoh Pokemon. I am very confident that we're going to see Gigantamax Torterra, Gigantamax Empoleon, and Gigantamax Infernape with brand new designs, and I'm, I'm very excited to see them. I know that some people in the community are a little divided on whether or not we like Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing. Now, I'm of the opinion that it's the second best kind of gimmick that we've gotten in recent years from Pokemon. Megas most likely will always be my favorite, and they are my favorite right now. Then you got G-Maxes, and then Z-Moves. I wasn't a big Z-Move guy just because part of what I liked about the gimmick of Mega Evolution was that it actually changed the Pokemon's appearance. Z-Moves, it's just a fancy attack. So it's just, it's not exactly what I'm looking for in terms of a generational gimmick. Gigantamaxing, on the other hand, does change the form, and I do really love the atmosphere that gyms were able to create thanks to the fact that they had to be so big to facilitate Dynamaxing. They're going to have to change up the gyms in Sinnoh if they want to bring it back in gyms, unless they just kind of want to retcon that entire idea. The gyms are average sized in the Sinnoh region. They're small buildings with different puzzles that you have to do to get to the eventual gym. Now, the gyms in Galar did have puzzles, uh, and eventually it led to the stadium itself, so there's a way that they can re-engineer the gyms in Sinnoh in order to facilitate it to be big enough to hold a crowd and for it to facilitate Dynamaxing. But the other thing is gyms bring up another question, which is that in the story of Sword and Shield, the the spectators in the gyms were a big part as to why they were so big. Gym battles and the gym challenge are part of the culture of Galar. They are what everybody gets excited for. It was emulating soccer in the UK and the rest of Europe, or football as they call it over there. It's emulating that atmosphere. Sinnoh doesn't necessarily have that. Sinnoh is more of a backwater, kind of blue-collar region. It doesn't exactly scream this is a big sporting event so you're gonna have to possibly change up a couple things some reasoning for why it's there if you want to accomplish that goal now the other thing to talk about with gigantamaxing and dynamaxing is why it's there now a couple youtubers have hit on this in that necrozma is the reason why we have dynamaxing it flies across the region dropping wishing pieces it comes from outer space and that power is what gives pokemon the ability to dynamax so unless you want to retcon that reason, you're going to have to come up with a reason to put Eternatus in Sinnoh. You're going to have to have some kind of text or some kind of lore in one of the buildings, maybe in the Candelave Library, that talks about Eternatus visiting the Sinnoh region. You're going to have to fit, fit that in somewhere, and you might have to do an alternate timeline sort of thing like what happened with Oras. The explanation given in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, for those who don't know as to why Megas are in those games but aren't in the originals, it's because it's an alternate universe. It's what really blew up the multiverse theory in the Pokemon community, and it eventually got even more focus put on it once we got Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which also, on top of having their new gimmick of Z-Moves, had Megas. Yet for some reason, Sword and Shield did not have Megas. It is what it is. I'm not complaining. I am complaining, actually. So that's a lot of the stuff with Dynamax. We're going to see it in Sinnoh. I'm very confident, and I'm very confident we're going to get a ton of new G-Max forms. So what I want to know from you guys is this. Besides the starters and besides some of the obvious choices like a Garchomp, like a Vespaquen, what Pokemon do you think deserve G-Max forms, and do you think they're only going to be Sinnoh Pokemon? We'll see. I think it's up for debate right now, but I'm of the opinion that we're mostly going to see the Sinnoh Mons get new G-Max forms. With that being said, this video is a wrap. Let me know down in the comments what you thought, and if you want to see more Diamond and Pearl remake discussion videos either before or once the games eventually get announced, let me know that as well. Of course, if you want to follow me on social media, all my links are down in the description. I'm LinkyYT on everything, and with that being said, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out.